system. I'm going to ask you to, to kind of define Project Atomic and specifically we're going to talk today about Atomic Host in just a minute. But I wanted to hop over to Colin because I gave you a brief introduction there. Um, but tell, tell everyone what your role is with Project Atomic. Yeah, so like the intro said, I do a lot of work on Atomic Host and uh, our CI efforts. Um, one of the big parts about Project Atomic is that we have a branch of Docker with some patches, uh, which is a subject in the media recently. Some of those patches are are pretty important, and uh, you know, so help out with those. So I, I guess a good example is uh, we have a patch that allows containers when they're run to inherit um, well, we call them secrets, but it's really kind of configuration from the host. So a canonical example might be if you need a container to access uh, content that's protected by a client certificate for access, that's where we we still carry a patch to allow inject that in container. Um, so it's it's a wide variety of stuff, but the the main really besides all the peripheral stuff, the the main thing I do is I'm the upstream maintainer of the OS3 and RPM OS3 projects, which are the tool to update the host operating system in an atomic fashion. You said is CI, I mentioned CI, CD. Is that uh, continuous integration, continuous development? Uh, continuous delivery, yeah. So ah, uh, delivery. we have a stream in CentOS that uh, that I help maintain that's basically tracking Git master of a bunch of our different projects like the, the atomic command and OS tree and RPM OS tree and, and a, a variety of projects. Um, one of the things that it also does, um, a challenge for us has actually been maintaining a bunch of different streams. You know, we have Fedora, we have CentOS, um, and Fedora has multiple releases. And one of the things that I'm trying to do is basically for the components we care about, like Docker and Kubernetes and OS3 and like like the thing and the Atomic Command, the things are kind of important about Project Atomic is to try and version lock them between Fedora and CentOS so we're not maintaining too many independent streams, if that makes sense. So that's one of the things that this tool does. It, it basically tracks Fedora builds and automatically rebuilds them for CentOS. Okay. Well, I'm going to come back to this because I want to find out from you, Colin, what the relationship is between uh, Red Hat, Fedora, CentOS, um, and this in, a minute, in just a minute. But I want to go back to Josh real quick and ask him about what's the what's what's the overall goal of Project Atomic and specifically Atomic Host? What is it for someone that is just new to this? Maybe they don't know a whole lot about it. Um, what what problem are you trying to solve, and how are you, how are you doing that? So Project Atomic is actually an umbrella project. It's really more of a meta project uh, that contains at this point something like 30 different projects uh, for Red Hat in the container space. And the main goal is just to make containers production operational, um, including for large enterprises. Um, this so... Um, <clears throat> Some things have changed over the last year, but um, I'll tell you when I got involved with Docker back in version 0 0.4, version 1, that sort of thing, Docker was really nice for development, but wasn't useful for an actual production deployment. Um, too many things were missing. Um, and Red Hat staff saw that too um, and decided to add a lot of the things that were missing. Um, the, um, and, you know, and Red Hat had its own way of doing that. Now, now, uh, the mainstream Docker project in Docker Inc has been adding their own version of the missing operations pieces. Um, but Red Hat has its version based on a lot of experience supporting large enterprise customers. And so this includes things like a bunch of Docker patches, um, patches on the, the mainstream Docker project itself to make it integrate better with enterprise tools, to do other things. Um, Atomic Host, which we'll be talking about more later. Um, the Atomic CLI, which is a uh, wrapper command line tool to allow you to do a number of different things with containers that normally require a number of different tools to do. Um, Atomic App, which is a tool for uh, composing, that is writing a script to create a multi-container application. Um, so an application that spans more than one container, because you might have like a web container and a database container and a proxy container, et cetera. Um, uh, and the Atomic Developer Bundle, which is a virtual machine image for Windows and Mac OS users who want to work on uh, Kubernetes and Docker and OpenShift and a bunch of other container stuff. Um, 
and then sort of in a host of other projects. Um, and, and this includes both things that get used um, in Red Hat products. Like, for example, a big part of the purpose of a lot of the stuff we have in Project Atomic is to actually provide a platform that OpenShift can be run on top of. Mm -hmm. um, but not everything. Some things are, are separate from that. Some things are experimental um, because this whole, you know, container ecosystem is rapidly evolving. And so to keep up with it, Red Hat engineers will experiment with new approaches and new designs for tools. And those generally go under Project Atomic because it is a pure open source upstream area and we don't have to worry about, you know, the Red Hat doesn't have to worry about support for these things. And so engineers can experiment with new approaches. Yeah. Well, I've really been uh, impressed with what Red Hat's been doing lately with um, uh, OpenStack, for example, and you mentioned OpenShift as well. Yeah. Uh, real quickly, just maybe a, a, a you know, 50 word overview of what OpenShift is, just in case people don't okay. know. So OpenShift is a platform, is a container based platform as a service offering. Uh, the idea is that if you want to take application code and you want to deploy it to a cloud of machines and run it, run the application code as a container, um, as part of your application infrastructure, then you'd use OpenShift. Uh, yeah. Comparable projects would be uh, DS um, or uh, DCOS, um, which have, have very sort of similar feature sets and goals. Right. Yeah, I know I've used OpenShift. I still have an account. <clears throat> I've used it a few years ago. I was really uh, impressed. I think it was an acquisition by Red Hat. Yeah. was really impressed with how it uh, worked, you know, seamlessly yeah. and how it was built for it. simple yet fine-grained right. enough knobs that you can go in and tune things like I.O. and things like that for your application needs. Uh, really cool cool uh, project. And I think we had them on the show, Randall saying uh, we had them on the show back in 2012. So people can go back and listen to that, but it has changed somewhat since then. Why not? Why isn't OpenShift just included under Project Atomic? It sounds like that's a separate, separate beast. Um, yeah, mostly because OpenShift is, OpenShift is a product. OpenShift came into Red Hat, as you mentioned, in a kind of a different way because it was an acquisition. Um, I think it was an acquisition. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I believe it anyway, was. Anyway, yeah. OpenShift, OpenShift started out as OpenShift Online. It started out as an online service um, and then became also a product and a project you could download. Um, and for that reason, it's been kind of different. Uh, mm -hmm. The other thing is we actually kind of want to keep the separation there. That is, Project Atomic is there for people who want to build their own stuff. And OpenShift is there for people who are like, I have some code. I just want to run it in containers. And I just want it to work um, yeah. because we're dealing with with both sides, right? Like in your sort of development only shops, that's what they want. They want the full stack. They want it to just run. Um, on the other hand, when you're dealing with a lot of larger shops, particularly a lot of Red Hat Enterprise customers, um, because ultimately, you know, customers feed into this because that's how I get paid and Colin gets paid. Um, I they have very strong ideas of how their infrastructure should be built. And for that reason, they don't necessarily want the full stack as is um, because, for example, they might already have their own continuous integration tool chain um, and they might not want to use the one that ships with OpenShift. Um, and so for that reason, we also want to provide basically the parts so that they can build their own. 